How can we create a rolling three month sum? Hello, I'm Philip Burton at ViduData.com. So here we can see we've got some dates and some invoice amounts. And what I want to do is create a three month total. So for December, I want December, January, and February. For January, I want January, February, and March. So I've done a previous video where I've just done it by quarter, but it wasn't rolling. In other words, I didn't have every single month shown and a three month total for that. So in this video, let's have a look at how we can do a rolling sum. So first of all, we need to find the year and the month of the invoice. And we can do that very simply just by using year and month. And I want to have the invoice amount as well. So we need to have some of these with aliases. So if I run this, then we now have the invoice month and the invoice year. Now, what is the where statement I need? Well, I need to know, for instance, for this one, 2023 four, everything in four, five and six. So that looks like it's going to be where invoice year equals 2023 and invoice month between four and six. And that will, if you don't use the aliases because you can't use aliases in a where clause, give me the right answer. But then let's have a look at it again and say, well, what are we going to do for this month? Well, it needs to be where the year is 2023 and the month is between 11 and, and 1. That doesn't quite work because then the year is 2024. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a new column which has the number of months since the year zero. So I'm going to multiply the year by 12 and the month by one and just add it together. So I'm going to now say the year of the invoice times 12 plus the month of the invoice. And so this is my calculation. So if I run this, we can see that for this month, this month, 2023 November is month number 24,287. So we need all of the rows between 24,287 and two more than that. So we have a three month window. So I want to know the current month, the month after that, and the month after that. So that is plus two. So I can say where this is between 24,287 and 24. 289. So that gives me that. So I need to apply that to all of the months. So we can see here. Now, the easiest way for me to do this, so this is a where just for this one particular month, is to use a CTE, a common table expression. If you're not used to CTEs, is have the word with, then a name. So this can be monthly, the word as, and then you put your statement in brackets. Then you can say, okay, select star from the word that you've done previously. So this creates a temporary query. You might go, okay, what's the advantage of that? Well, now I can say where, I don't have to say all of this. I can just say the invoice calc. I can say the aliases in the where. So where this is between, and I'm just going to put in two random dates and there we have all of the information. Okay, so far, so good. So what I want is the sum of the invoice amount for that right number of rows as an extra column. So this is when we do another query inside the select. So I'm going to say, give me the sum of the invoice amount from my monthly table. So that is a sub query and I can say as three month invoice amount. So if I run this, we'll see that it doesn't give me just the three months. It gives me all of the entirety of the table. And the reason for that is because I haven't asked it to have a where clause in here. So I'm going to have a where clause. So for this line, I want it to be where invoice calc is between 24278 and 24280. So I put where 
the invoice calc of this from is between, and don't write the word is, the invoice calc of this monthly and two months later. So we've got 78, 79 and 80. But the problem is now the computer's going, okay, which particular invoice calc are you talking about? I'm going to assume it's this one, but I'm saying no, for this and for this, it needs to be the outer query. So what I need to do now is alias these tables with different aliases. So now I can say the inner invoice calc is between the outer invoice calc and the outer invoice calc plus two. So now if I execute this, we can see that in 2023 February, we have a total of nine between February, March and April. Now there is some duplication here. We do not need rows with duplicate invoice years, invoice months and invoice calcs. So I'm going to put invoice year, invoice month and invoice calc. So that gets rid of the invoice amount column. Make sure I have a comma at the end. And I'm just going to actually just say at the beginning here, select star from invoices so we can actually see the original data as well. And I'll always have to put a semicolon before a with. That's what that error is talking about. So here we have got February being a total of nine. So that is these adding up one, two, five, seven, nine. But we've still got the duplicates. That's very easily removed. We just put the word distinct here. And so that gives me a unique year month invoice calc row. So there we are. We have now got a running total. So for April, it is April to June. So a total of 15. Let's have a look at the original data. And April to June, 2 plus 4, 9, 12, 15. So that's what we've got. And so for November here, we've got 8. So let's scroll down. November, December, January got 8. Excellent. And for January 2023, we've got, oops, it's missing from the original data. And we don't therefore have a calculation because our years and months come from the original data. And if I don't have one for January, what can I do? Well, one possibility is I could just insert extra data. So I add, here's my new data row, and I'm going to say zero. And I need a comma after that. And so that inserts a January. In fact, I could also say null to make it even clearer that this is dummy data which has been added. But suppose I didn't want to do that. Suppose I didn't want to add additional data. Well, I would need, therefore, a complete list of invoice calc from the first to the last. So how am I going to do this? Well, I can do that with something called row number. So if I have the basics, which is select the row number over and from. So now I need to select my from. Well, let's use my original data invoices because there's enough rows in there. If there wasn't enough rows, you could always use something like sys objects. Next, I need an order by in here. So I'm going to order by, and it doesn't matter what I order by. I'll order by the invoice date. It really doesn't matter. So if I run this, you can see that we have a number of rows being added, 1 to 15 in this case. Okay, I need numbers between... 24276 and 24289. So what I can do is I can add 24275. So that row number one becomes 24276. So if I scroll down, we can now see we've got this list of numbers here. So this can be used to fill in these gaps. So I have a 24277. So let me introduce this into my CTE. So I'm going to have another temporary table and all I have to do is put a comma and then say this as, so month numbers as, and in brackets, what I've just done. So now instead of getting my data 
of the months for monthly, I can get it from months numbers. You can see that there's a problem here. It says no column was specified for column one in month numbers. So when you do a CTE, you do have to have all of your aliases in place. So at the moment, I have this running from my invoices table and not my month numbers. So what do I need to do? I just need to change this from monthly to month numbers. Now I haven't provided the invoice year and the invoice month. So all I need is the invoice calculation. And there we go. We now have a continual list from 24276 to 24289. So that includes 24277, which we didn't previously have. But I can't really calculate in terms of 24276. I want to know the year and the month. Well, year sounds very straightforward. I just divide this by 12. So this would be my new year. And I need a comma. And we can see my new year is now 2023. So that seems to work. Emphasis on the word seems. So how do I get the month? Well, instead of using a divide, I use a percentage sign. That gets me the remainder after a calculation. So this is my new month. And so we can see that this is January 2023, February 2023, all the way to November 2023. And the next month is month zero, 2024. Well, it's sort of true, month zero, 2024, but we normally call it month 12, 2023. And that's the problem. If you divide by 12, then you will get a remainder between zero and 11. You won't get one between 1 and 12. And similarly, the year will go up 1. So what you have to do in this case is just subtract 1 so that it pushes it back into the old year. And then for the month, you add 1 afterwards. So the result of that will be, this will no longer be 2024 remainder 0, but 2023 remainder 11. And if we add 1 to 11, we get 12 like that. And then finally, you can see that we don't actually have any data for February 2024, which gives us a no. Well, that's no problem. What we can do is have this in my where and say is not no. And that gets rid of that. Alternatively, I could put all of this into another part of the CTE and then I can say where three month invoice amount is not null. So there's a lot in this video. We've had a look at how we can have the years and the month and then a single figure which calculates the two together. Then we've had a look at a correlated query in the select clause which has a look at the table but compares it with the table in the outer clause. And then we had a look at how we can create our own month numbers and fill in any missing gaps using row number. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not like it? And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you can be notified of any new videos. Now, if you want any more information about correlated queries or row numbers or anything like that, then please go to my website, idodata.com where you can have information about my TSQL courses and any of my other courses. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.